Motion to approve. I have motion by Hack to approve the agenda. Second. Second by Stern. Discussion. All in favor of this agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right. Jared, you're up. Oh boy. Um, sorry I'm not there. I, I think I told you guys before, I'm the, my goal is to attend once a month. So I will be attending this third Monday. I wasn't able to last month because I had meetings in Fargo, um, so I hope it's all right. But uh, my agenda is a little more full than, than last time. I don't think there's a lot more approval, just more to talk about. Um, 2009 Street Improvement Project. So the process there is um, financial completion, give the contractor a punch list, Get the work done, final completion. So tonight we're at the point where the contractors completed the punch list items that are identified to them. Uh, we owe the contractor five thousand dollars of retainage from from last year. So if you look closely, my math isn't adding up here. Um, what's going on is um, we had to deduct some money from mail for a couple property farmers that they pay damage. Uh, I basically took the list of corners that Mr. Link had built you guys for over the last couple of years. You know, an average cost for each one, deducted the two that we had photographed and damage of. Uh, this is in addition to other stuff that you know, I think we deducted from them in the past. Um, so the final payment for mail is only $4,350. That is page two. Three, four, five, six, and seven in your packet. Um, overall, with all the deducts from the, the patching, property corners, from some other concrete work that we're not paying them for, $38,715.75 is what the total deduct was for, for mail across the board on, on the projects. But the final payment for these guys is those two numbers, price contracting plus mail and uh what the city will do is just hold that payment to pride until they are done and gee my, my my numbers on that sheet aren't adding up to me um i wasn't sure 1541 and the 4350 together they add up to the, the the contractor's application for payment, which is 17391 but I think the split might be just a hair different than that. I'd have to verify that for you tomorrow before you raise the chance. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't had a chance to go through it here, to be perfectly honest. So okay. I'll look at it again in the morning. Overall, they, add, they add up to the right number, though, I know, 17391 But let's just coordinate tomorrow or before you pay Okay. But we, we, and, need, we need approval from the, the board on this one. Mm -hmm. And the payment to Pride is for that sidewalk <coughs> that was to go to Lumber. Yeah. So the total payment is 17? That amount is correct, yes. Yeah, so we'll make a motion to approve the payment $17,391. Second. Motion by Pillar, second by Stern. Discussion. So then, um, is this the last, I guess, last payment then, Jared? This will be it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this will be the last payment for mail. Your assessment commission is basing the, all the assessments off of um, this total project cost. Um, which is five million one hundred sixty-three thousand two hundred ninety-three dollars seventy-six cents. Okay. Right. Any more discussion? Roll call. Pillar. Aye. Stern. Aye. Hack. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Obenauer. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, Jerry. Hey, I feel like a rule. I feel like a broken record saying it, but you know, the, the special assessment process should be starting or ongoing. I'm not sure exactly where they are, but um, 
If they haven't started meeting already, we better get after them because they got some publishing to do. Everybody should see their assessments in the newspaper. Um, <coughs> they should have an opportunity to protest them if, if for some reason they're, you, you don't think they're correct um, at a hearing at, at some point. So, I mean, I'm not completely in the loop with that stuff, but that, that should be starting so we're done by October. Um, so, really, the, the next thing on my list, I'm just going to skip down. At the last meeting, you guys told me to get two quotes for different items. So, we listed a quote for repairing 11th Avenue. Um, it just happened to be that Beck told Dating was doing a bunch of work in Beulah, and Monty called and let me know that, so I called them. They were very familiar with the area. They given some other quotes in that area to pick up the other street that have settled. So um should be page number eight in, in your packet that'll be right on the back side of this contract with application payment. I didn't number all the pages but this one I did. So um what I had them do was base their quote on um they gotta lower the manhole at the mill at all the edges, driveway locations. Um and then fill in the low areas <coughs> and relay the entire this, this would be kind of a Cadillac fix. It's about 61000 bucks to do all that work. Um, but he kind of said if you're not sure you're going to get paid or if you want to just do the bare minimum for now, um, which would be lower the manhole, fill in all the low spots, kind of level everything off. No overlay over the whole thing. It would be about um, I think it's about 20,000 bucks. And I sent this, and I think Monty was trying to get this over to Williams. Yeah, it was sent to Williams. I haven't heard back. Okay. Jared, does so, Beck will have time? Do they have time to do that this fall yet if, if we decide to go this way? Sharing both of those numbers with Williams right now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on to the next thing, water storage system. So we, we found a good area. Um, next step in the NEPA process, environmental solicitation of newsletters. We did that. Um, it's about 12 federal agencies that get them. I anticipated getting um, responses now that we're getting. So SHPO, State Historic Preservation Office, um, so we're going to have an archaeologist look at it. Um, I sent out solicitation forms for four archaeologists to go and do their thing. Um, the low quote I included in here was for $2,000. Um, they range anywhere from $2,000 to $7,000. So uh, that fee is built into more engineering contracts. We budgeted for that. Um, so I intend to direct them to proceed up there. It'll be a, they'll do some title research and then they'll do some uh, walking around on site. They may bring a, a shovel or two with them, but it's not going to be invasive. They're not going to have back holes or anything like that. They'll be digging holes. I do think it'd be good to let the landowner know that there'll be a um, archaeologist and his wife or maybe even some students or something that be walking around in that property up there and uh, looking things over and assuming they don't find any culturally sensitive sites, they'll write a report saying that it's uh, okay to do some work up there. Um, and then you guys can acquire the property and, and be done with it. Um, any questions there? No, we're good. I'll let the landowner know. Okay, that sounds good. 
don't know when it'll be. They said they had this whole thing done within 30 days, so they might be a week out, but okay. it'll just be at I was walking up there. Um, one of the other responses that came back was from the core. Um, they want to ensure that we're not disturbing any wetlands up there. And normally I'd say it's not a big deal, but you go directly north of the existing water tank. They uh, identified what could be an inter intermittent stream up there. So we got to take a look at that. We'll do what's called an office wetland delineation and send it to them. And we'll, we'll probably, we'll just have to wait for the, um, the letter to come back. So it's not, it's not a, a costly permit. It just takes time to process it. Based on your schedule of doing the work next year, there should be no problem. But if you wanted to start digging right now, you probably would have had to like, go around it. But just one of those things that, we have to wait on to finalize the environmental process. We get the 404 permit from the court. Uh, just keeping in the loop. I don't, I mean, it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be. A lot of times if there are identified wetlands, you either have to bore under them or go around them. But we're not going to do any mitigation or anything like that. I don't think it'll be a big deal. Okay. Um, so I guess. Really, I, I just started adding a few things on the bottom here of uh, this below design and construction. Um, where if you recall, we, we budgeted a bunch of money to um, remove the equipment from your treatment plant building. <clears throat> Start thinking about what you guys want that to be. I mean, we can, we can just pull all the stuff out of there and just leave it. But if you're thinking there's going to be some purpose to that building and you want to try to sneak a few things into the bid to do a thing here or there. Uh, we can look at doing that. And then um, your new tank is going to have some some sensors, pressure um, sensors up there. And so we'll have opportunity to change your computer system a little bit. Um, what you have now is um, kind of an auto dialer. And that's pretty old technology. So we'll probably look at doing something similar, but just with a, either a cell phone or internet signal so that the guys get notified differently if there's an intruder or a flood or a frozen pipe or something up there. But just keep thinking about that. No really approvals yet, but I'm just going to leave that on there. We've got to talk about that uh, before we start any type of design this fall. Um, and then next thing I have really is just the freezing water service lines. Um, we solicited quotes to do that work. Um, fixed water service line is what we got addresses for. So we did a very simple one page quote form. Um, and the intention was to hire somebody and dig them up, insulate those areas, and then patch back the asphalt this year. Um, so I want that work done before fall. For this season, um, I, I have got one quote back. But I'm, I'm not going to read it off yet. I don't want anybody possibly listening to hear what that quote is. Um, but I, I, I was happy to see what we got, um, and I, I would anticipate another three or four. Those are due on the 12th ahead of your next council meeting. <clears throat> 12th, 12th or the 10th? Can't remember the one. 12. 12. Okay. Otherwise. Um, then I guess at your next meeting you'll have quotes for the, uh, the potential work on 11th Avenue, and then the quotes for the freezing uh, the, the, the water service lines to freeze. So I'm sure if you're going to go forward with that, think about where that comes from and if you can support it. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any questions for Jared? Okay. Okay, Jared, thank you. I'm gonna, I've only got about 10 more minutes before I gotta run here. So yell at me if there's something that you want me to address. All right, we will, thanks. <clears throat> thank you. All right, moving down uh, to 6A. Uh, we have a 
local permit for the Rona's Run Poker Run. And might be one of well, what they're doing is uh, you can use any type of vehicle for this poker run for each location that they have. You get a card for your hand for poker, and then when they get back to Hazen at the Bison Bar, the best hand wins. There is no draw or anything like that. It's just the best hand wins. Spoke to the Attorney General's office. Basically, if they're going to do this at the Bison Bar, since Hazen Winter Sports has the site authorized, Hazen Winter Sports would not be able to conduct gaming that day unless they selected a different location to actually compare their hands. So uh, Rachel said she was going to work with Ms. Newberger as far as getting that, so I'll just keep on top of that to make sure that only one activity is going on there that day. And the proceeds go to the Hazen Fire and Rescue for helmets and gear. Yeah. Okay. All right. We need a motion to approve this. So moved. Yeah, motion by Pillar. Second. Second by Wolf. Discussion. <coughs> we need a roll call, Mike. Yeah. No. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same time. All right. That's carried. Thank you. All right, down to uh, eight uh, building permits. We have four of them, uh, all very all requesting variances. Eight um, A is the bulk property, and they're here. Yeah, this is on the um, the bulk zone two lots over there in West Hazen Addition. This would be on this lot two, block two, you know, this little southern lot area. Um, the variance requested is for height to go 12 feet to match the existing buildings on the property. It will be sited and and to look like the house so that it can fit in decent with everything else on the property. Tom, do you want to add anything? Um, no, not really. Pretty much covered it. I've got uh, Hager Holmes doing the structure and Tom Lee's doing the concrete. It'll be uh, the siding, the shingles, everything's going to match the house. It's a fairly level lot. We'll set that elevation. The roof lines will hold the smoke. Tom looks good. <laughs> the roof lines will match the house. Uh, my existing garage has 12 foot walls in it. So the cement is building on the other lot will have to match that. Question. Motion to approve. Motion by Wolf. Second. Second by Stern. <coughs> Discussion. Roll call. Wolf. Aye. Stern. Aye. Hack. Aye. Pillar. Aye. Mobenauer. Aye. Motion carried. When are you building it? Uh, depends on the concrete. It's probably about a month away yet. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Mel Roth variance request. Building application. Okay. This is south of his home. It's on a separate lot again. Oops. A little hard to see here. He's proposing a 32 by 50 foot building with 12 foot sidewalls. Again, this is a variance for the sidewall height. This will still be lower than his existing buildings because it is a two story house. He will side it the same, but it will have a steel roof. I'm sorry, it will have steel walls too, but it will be a similar color. Access from his. It's from actually access house? from 7th Street on the okay. south side. So it's a totally separate lot, too, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Motion by Stern. 
second. Second by half. Discussion. <coughs> Roll call. Stern? Aye. Tat? Aye. Keller? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Obenauer? Aye. Motion carried. And next one is a billing for the variance for Mike Just. Mr. Just is looking to purchase a twelve by twenty four garage from a company called Six O Five Shed. He brought me a picture today. It would be similar to this except it would be the dark brown color with the lighter color trim similar to his house, the, color, the dark brown. The variance needed is for the back and side yard. And he would have to take out trees if he stayed the 15 feet from the alley easement or easement back there. There is no actual alley. And five feet from the side where his fence is, which is on the property line. It's eight foot sidewalls. He's actually a backyard variance of ten feet and a side yard variance of two and a half feet. I'd like to see that two and a half further. Well, he'll still be five feet from the property line. Because okay. he's for that zoning district, he's supposed to be seven and a half feet from the property line. He's proposing it only be five. And that's so he doesn't have to remove trees, Martin? Correct. <clears throat> Motion by Wolf. Second. Second by Stern. Discussion. Roll call. Wolf. Aye. Stern. Aye. Hack. Aye. Killer. Aye. Hobenauer. Aye. Motion carries. All right. And the fourth uh, permit with variance for. Mike Peterson and Josh Peterson. Okay, he's they're requesting a variance to build a 10 by 14 deck on the east side of Mike Peterson's home. They would need a two and a half foot variance because this area is actually no, it is seven and a half feet. So he is proposing to be only ten feet. No, excuse me, five feet away from the property line again. It's a little misleading how this fence runs back here, but the property line does follow this parking pad of the neighbors. So he would be five feet away from this parking pad. Is that a fence there? There is a fence back here, yes. But he is currently 15 feet from that fence back here. Shed or? Yeah, the deck. Yeah. Oh, deck. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Where they're wanting to put the deck is, is adjacent to the parking pad on the, yes. the neighbor's yeah. 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 yes. yard. It's toward the front of the house. Yep. Apparently, this is yep. the sleeping area of the house, and they want actual access out of there. 
in case of an emergency. Sure, Harry, thank you, Mr. Building Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second by half. Discussion? Roll call. Tiller. Aye. Hack. Aye. Stern. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Obenauer. Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> Down to nine reports. Water sewer. Okay, over at lift station number one, we have a communication cable that comes off of the motor into the control panel that monitors the condition of the pump. And we have a we have a fault in that particular line. It's a specialty type cable. It's a 50 foot cable, and uh, we received a quote for the cable that <coughs> brings the disassembly of the existing and reassembly of the new in there in the amount of $2,310. So I'd be making a motion that we move forward then to repair that so we get good repair <coughs> on that lift station in the amount of $2,310. Okay, we have a motion by a pillar. Second. Second by act. Discussion. <coughs> Roll call. Oh, oh. sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Is this cable then go right on the motor then? Yeah, it mounts, mounts into the motor and it has a, a seal fitting and stuff on there. It drapes up in the, the lift station itself up to the top where it catches a conduit into the control panel. And then they, they apply the duct seal and everything like that on there to make sure that everything is weather, weather impervious. So then I guess when they put in the spare pump, this cable on the spare pump, or is it? I think this is on the primary pump in that, uh, but I didn't I didn't talk to Ryan to confirm that. But I'm assuming it transfers over. It does? Yeah. There's a plate that's built onto that cable or whatever. When they take that plate off, then that whole assembly falls oh, over. Okay. They move, move it over to the other one. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Okay. <coughs> More discussion? Roll call. Pillar. Aye. Hat. Aye. Stern. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Hobenauer. Aye. Mr. Kerry. Yeah. And the uh, the other thing at our other lift stations, uh, Ryan and I had some discussions. We're looking at the technology we have in there right now for, for monitoring those. And we're, we're seeing if there's some alternative technology as we move forward because uh, you get to the point where parts are no longer available, nor are there people that remember how to service some of those uh, technologies that are in there. Those people are retired or, or moved on from this planet so we're, we're looking at what kind of alternatives that we have for that so that's to come that's it okay thank you streets cemetery i have nothing at this time i have busing i love it from this time thank you and police i have right. nothing Buster. Hey, all right. I was at a Mercer County Economic Development meeting last Thursday, which is the first one we've had in probably a year, close to a year and a half, trying to get the organization back up and running at a change in, change in officers. And uh, Deaver Brinkman is going to be the President Buster is going to be the vice president. Jerry wasn't there, so he couldn't defend himself, but he is the president of treasurer, and uh, Lane Hoffner is going nice. to serve as the <laughs> he's going to serve as the secretary. And Jerry maybe could get out of it at the next meeting. I don't know. He wasn't there. We didn't. We just assumed he was going to be Jerry to slash him. Monty. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, just trying to, you know, the other thing that they're doing now is they're taking another um, good look at the bylaws. Uh, you know, they haven't been looked at for quite a while, so those are going to probably be updated a little bit. Uh, we did have some uh, 
industry reports from a couple of the agencies that were there that were in attendance. But, uh, you know, we didn't have, uh, you know, great, re great turnout. You know, uh, that's been some of the concern in the past with the NICAD is, is that it's been hard to get people there. And so uh, there were probably, I think, eight or nine of us that were there representing the various agencies. And typically, just so, you know, typically there's 13 board members, but then there's also some guests that come that do report and those kinds of things, you know. Talk a little bit about Antelope, uh, Antelope Valley is going to have some outages coming up. Uh, Brad Zimmerman talked about that. You know, they'll be they'll be looking at an outage eventually coming up as well. And, you know, and, uh, other than that, you know, um, pretty straightforward. You know, so, but hopefully we'll be able to uh, you know start moving, uh, be a little more active. Let's put it that way. Uh, and, uh, we have that in the time, so. I guess I'd entertain questions if there are any. Can you get, uh, if you get how about jet, I've been those for longer times, can you get some of those my way? If the, if, if if the former president will let me. <laughs> I will. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, Buster. Yeah. Um, under my report, I only thing I wanted to just touch on is this information only is. I got a phone call the other day from Lad Erickson, who's the uh, McLean County State's Attorney, <clears throat> and uh, he has been kind of the lead speaker for their county and a few other agencies uh, dealing with coal and uh, Falkirk and Coal Creek, uh, and he is actually he and Jason Bohr from Lincoln Energy Council called me and want to know if we'd be willing to possibly host a meeting in Hazen of just all those stockholders that are involved in uh, the, not stockholders per se, but actually um, everybody involved in, in what, what education of what wind has to offer, what coal has to offer, what, what is the, what is the possibility of Working together, what is what happens if Mercer County decides to continue the moratorium on wind? How is that going to hurt our county? How is it going to help our county? You know, what are payments? You know, you know, a lot of people have a mixed understanding of what wind payments are. You hear the commercials of uh, New Era or um, any of these wind companies coming and saying we're bringing millions of dollars of you know revenue into your communities and your counties. Well, those are obviously very mixed messages, and obviously they, you know, they set up those commercials to, you know, sound really good. And uh, you know, Bob Evans told us that there'd be four to five jobs in Mercer County that pay forty to forty-five thousand dollars a year. That's 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 the wind. That's that's their wind company's um, input into our county. However, um, I think it's be a great opportunity for you know citizens of our community landowners that have possibility of having wind on their properties or coal lease people uh, anybody that's any any stakeholder that's the word isn't we're not shareholder stakeholder <laughs> that could be involved that's anybody in our counties um, and even those people that own land that don't live in our county or state you know the 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 Project up north here, that 60% of those people don't live in Mercer County or North Dakota. So it's one of those things where we need to know all the aspects of it. And I said, I, I kind of spoke um, for all of us saying I would like to see that meeting held here at some point. Um, and even our local legislators be involved because there is a session coming up this this winter and with the legislation. And we, we need to be able to have, um, approach them. We, because if we don't, we know that um, Capital Power and uh, Next Era, the, the wind companies, they will be approaching and they will be asking for things. So we need to make sure we, we have a voice. So uh, I will keep you informed of what's 
what's to come and uh, what everybody will be invited out to the city. It's not it's not going to be just uh, 20 people in a room. I'm hoping I would I would love to see two three hundred people at a meeting like that. So. We can be educating everybody on both sides of it. So, anyhow, that's just uh, information only um, for now. Moving on to 11A, uh, 2021 preliminary budget. <coughs> Marty is putting As I informed you in the notes, I made those changes that we discussed at our meeting. The final. Expenditures overall are reduced 15% from this year, the current year, and the general fund is just over 26% reduction. With with just a it's a not quite 15% reduction on general fund revenue anymore. I did put a transfer in there in case we transferred some funds in from some of our reserves, so that makes them look a little different. Mm -hmm. I guess basically I'm looking at doing our budget hearing on October 5th. Budgets are due to the county by October 9th. So your budget hearing would be during your regular meeting on October 5th for the yeah. public to address any concerns they have. Yeah. So unless there's questions. We ask your approval of the preliminary budget. Again, we can't go up, but we can always go down from there. And I'll keep looking at stuff. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Motion by Pillar, second by Wolf. Discussion. Roll call. Pillar. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Hack. Aye. Stern. No. Open hour. Aye. Motion carried. All right. 11B, Public Works Division. Okay. Uh, last week we, we had opportunity to interview some fine candidates from our community for this position, which is a, an accommodation position working with the the waterworks within the city as, as well as with the street team and we are proposing tonight and looking for approval from the board here to make an offer to Mr. Mike Lemire. We had four interviews that night and they were all very good. It all applicants we I thought think we could you know we had to make other options we could break too but I it might be a very nice job. Okay, so we have a, we have a motion, Monty, for that, or just a recommendation? Well, I guess you should take formal action that you're going to make the offer to him, okay. pending any, okay. pending the testing. So. so I would make the motion that, that we would make an offer to Mike Lemire. Okay, we have a motion by Pillar. Second. Second by Hack. Discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. you call him tomorrow, Monty. I will contact him yet tonight. Tonight, yeah. All right, thank you. All right, and that takes us down to approval of the bills. <coughs> I assume the is working now. Is that part of it? Yeah. Actually, using the hard one ink is still the previous owner's corporate name. It might be before we put the bills on this spreadsheet that you did with the various fees on it. Are you want us to? That's just for your information. Okay. So you can think about it and work on that. So okay. We can make them great if you want to reward them, whatever. All right. Thank you. Motion to approve the bills. A motion by Hack to approve bills. Second. And second by Stern. <coughs> Discussion. Roll call. Hack. Aye. Stern. Aye. Hiller. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Ovenor. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Link? Yes. Do you have some info for us? Or? Uh, I'll here to see if you folks are making any decisions on the annexation process, and the other was a Peace Lutheran Church concrete replacement. And the only question I had there is has there been any investigation that you're going to want to replace part of that sewer line in that north south stretch from that middle hole north? And it might be about 200 feet. When, uh, you know, I don't have any information on that. Dave, do you have any? Yeah. I can talk to Brian about what some of the camera angles of that yeah. what it looks like. We haven't had a camera yet, have we? Uh, I thought you did a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, oh, it was so. just a couple of years okay. ago. It was just a couple of years ago. Yeah. I know we we haven't talked formally enough about it. I don't think we make a motion on it or we take action on it. But well, the discussion at the previous meeting was that is, if he works along with the engineer, yeah. he was basically approved to proceed until yeah. they get ready to bid. So, yeah. but yeah, the discussion about the sewer line is something. That yeah, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we had a camera a couple years ago, are we assuming that's not changed? Yeah, I haven't been here or anything. I guess I never, Ronnie would have been here when that was camera, so I guess I haven't been here or what the results were. Where does that live? I have, I have a copy, and I guess Ronnie would have a copy as well, okay. so we'll get it done. Okay. Right. In the annexation aspect, I did, you know, talk visit with Casey a little bit, um, some of the annexation stuff. And I guess we, we need to make, for the next meeting, we make a decision on which areas we want to attack. So, not tonight. No, well, I, I figured there was nothing okay. tonight. I, I was more curious if you had any discussion that you were going to visit about or express this evening, but you're not ready no. for that. No. That's no. Just the way it is. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ken. Yeah. All right. Meeting adjourned.